It chapter 2 clocked in at a whopping 2 hours 50 minutes, however the initial cut was around 4 hours long, meaning there are a ton of fascinating deleted scenes fans never got to see. Yippee kaye movie lovers, I'm Jan and in this video I'm revealing all the deleted scenes from IT chapter 2 and explaining the 6 hour director's super cut that we can look forward to. My Pennywise Funko Pop giveaway is still running, so make sure you subscribe and keep watching for more details on that. And of course, spoilers ahead! The trailers hint at an intriguing deleted scene where Mike is taunted by Pennywise when he visits the burned out building where his parents died. And the World of It book reveals a lot more details about the cut scene. At the time, the town of Derry thought that Mike's father had set fire to the building on purpose because he'd lost his mind. You can see a hint of this in the actual movie, where Mike's in the library looking at a newspaper headline that claims his parents were crackheads. In the deleted scene, when Mike returns to the building, he encounters Pennywise, who shows him the burnt corpse of a little girl who also died in the fire, and the evil clown tries to make Mike feel even guiltier by claiming his parents were to blame for the girl's death. If they had included this deleted scene in the final film, the truth about Mike's parents would have been discovered after the losers killed it for good. This would have happened in the closing scene of Mike at the library, where he would have noticed that the newspaper headline now read, Two locals die saving neighbour's daughter from electrical blaze. So with the evil curse of it lifted from Derry, the truth that Mike's parents were actually heroes who died saving a young girl's life would have been revealed. It would have been great to see this cutscene because all the other losers visited a place from their childhood and had an encounter with Pennywise during the film. But this barely happened for Mike other than that tiny flashback after which he was attacked by adult Henry Bowers. There's an extended scene of Beverly's encounter with Mrs. Kirsch at her old house. The scene was already pretty creepy in the movie, but it was cut down for time, and in the trailers, some of the moments play out a bit longer. There you go. Thank you. Now some music. That clip wasn't in the final film, and the scene instead cuts from Bev looking at the postcard to the music already playing. This trailer shot of flies buzzing around the window as we hear the music adds to the scene's creep factor, but was also scrapped from the final film. There's also concept art in the World of It book of an unused scene of Mrs. Kirsch transforming from the tea-making old lady into the enormous grotesque witch that attacks Beverly. The art looks pretty amazing and would have been cool to see in the film, but the filmmaker's decision not to show the transformation does make the giant witch's sudden appearance more of a disturbing shock. There's another deleted moment with Bev after she runs out of the building and into the street, which would have shown her being taunted by a bright red balloon with the words, Sweet Dreams Bevy. There's a similar scene in the book and 90s TV miniseries, where after rushing out of her old house, Bev is almost hit by a truck and then is freaked out when a yellow balloon appears out of nowhere. <laughs> Beverly also had an extended scene with the Mrs. Kirsch water monster that she encounters when the losers enter the cistern just before they go into Pennywise's lair. The monster drags Bev underwater and the other losers dive in to help her out. However, there's deleted footage of the battle underwater with the monster in the trailers. Jessica Chastain apparently injured herself performing the stunt for this scene, so hopefully the entire scene of the losers versus the monster will appear on the Blu-ray or in the supercut. Chapter 2 introduces a pretty trippy origin scene for It, with Mike giving Bill a drug that lets him see a vision of how It arrived on Earth and slaughtered everything It encountered. However, there was another scene of backstory filmed for Pennywise that screened briefly for test audiences in Chapter 1, and which many expected to appear in Chapter 2. The scene was set in 1637 in a building called the Well House, which later becomes a house on Newbolt Street. In the deleted scene, Pennywise terrorises a mother and her child by shape-shifting into various forms in front of her, and then threatening to eat her, her baby, and all of her other children. Pennywise then makes a bargain with her that if she leaves her baby for it to eat, it will leave her alone. Driven mad with fear, the mother gives up the baby, then becomes hypnotised by the deadlights, so from then on she's immune to the horror of Pennywise eating her baby and his future atrocities. The deleted scene was alluded to in the first movie via the painting in the town library of a woman carrying her baby to a well. A picture of Bill Skarsgård in an earlier human form circulated after Chapter 1, however it looks like the filmmakers decided against using that human form of Pennywise in Chapter 2, and instead had him putting on the clown's white makeup and tearing bloody red marks into his face during the Mrs. Kirsch sequence. 
Although Chapter 2 brought the adaptation of King's novel to a definitive close, there has been serious talk of a possible third It film, which would delve much deeper into Pennywise's origins and time in Derry before The Losers, so it's possible the deleted Wellhouse scene could be revisited if that third movie gets made. Also revealed in the World of It book is an alternate version of the flashback scene where Ben is taunted by Pennywise masquerading as Bev. In the final film, this happened back at school, but originally it was going to take place at the quarry and, linked to this, there's some deleted footage of adult Ben walking around the quarry by himself which also never made it into the actual movie. The book reveals that stunt double Sierra Jones took the place of Sophia Lillis and wore burn makeup for the flaming head scenes, and it also tells us that in the alternate quarry set version of that scene, after Beth set her hair on fire, Pennywise's hand would have also burst out of her chest holding Bev's beating heart. This does sound intriguing, however the school setting in the final film is likely more atmospheric and darker as it's set indoors, and the locker part of the scene also plays on Ben's claustrophobia, which was highlighted at the start and end of the movie. The school setting is also a better fit for Ben discovering his token for the Ritual of Chud, which is the page Bev signed in his yearbook. Fans of the book may have been somewhat disappointed at the lack of explicit references to the cosmic turtle from King's original novel. However, there was a deleted scene in Chapter 2 involving the turtle at the quarry. In a callback to Chapter 1 when they were kids, the surviving five losers jump into the lake, and there's an extended version of this scene where the adult losers swim underwater and encounter the turtle that Bill saw as a kid. Who was that? It's a turtle. Oh, right here. Right here. Right. Director Andy Muschietti has promised that we'll learn more about the turtle in the extended version of Chapter 2. For those who haven't read King's original novel, the turtle is a friendly cosmic entity that created the universe after vomiting it up when it had a tummy ache. Its name is Maturin, and as a being of creation, the turtle is presented as an entity opposed to it, who calls itself the Eater of Worlds. There are several other Maturin turtle easter eggs in Chapter 2 which I discuss in more detail in my Ending Explained video. There's a link to that in the video description and also at the end of this video. As well as the scene I mentioned earlier, Mike had another deleted scene with Pennywise in which the two of them confronted each other about their plans. Muschietti described the scene on the press tour as introducing the idea of belief as a weapon. The cut sequence played out like a chess game, with Mike saying, we're going to get you, now they believe, and Pennywise contradicting him, they believe in me. This would have been an interesting moment, but I can see why it was deleted as the idea of using belief to defeat Pennywise was touched upon in particular at the end when Bev gives Eddie the spike he uses against the Pennywise spider monster. Take it, it kills monsters. Do you believe it does? And in the final film, we see the losers harnessing the power of belief to imprint their will on Pennywise and shrink him down until he's weak enough to kill. Chapter 2 had its fair share of cameos, including Stephen King himself, who reunited Bill with his old bike Silver, director Andy Muschietti in the pharmacy scene, and Brandon Crane who played young Ben in the TV miniseries and returns here in the scene featuring adult Ben's teleconference with his architecture firm. However, fantasy and horror legend Guillermo del Toro, who produced Muschietti's debut feature film Mama, almost made an appearance in the scene of young Ben running away from Pennywise at school. Del Toro was going to play the school janitor that Ben bumped into and of course the scene would have ended up quite a bit longer in that case, but sadly Muschietti couldn't get schedules to line up with the famous filmmaker. Although Stephen King wasn't involved in the first It movie, he really enjoyed the film, so for Chapter 2 the filmmaker sent him an early draft of the screenplay for feedback. The author gave them a little list of things that he would like to see in the movie, one of which was the Paul Bunyan statue attack on Richie, which did make it in. However, in an interview with io9, Andy Muschietti revealed that King had also requested the inclusion of a scene from the end of the book, where the standpipe rolls down the hill during the destruction of Derry. The filmmakers ultimately decided against this, and Muschietti explained that we didn't go in that direction because I wanted to keep the ending more intimate and more about the emotions of the humans of this group. Still, there is a nod in the final film to the novel's destruction of Derry, when after its death, the underground cavern and sewer system collapse and the entire Nebolt house falls apart into the sinkhole below. In Chapter 2, Bev manages to stop the losers leaving Derry when she reveals she's had nightmares where she's seen them die if they don't defeat it during the current cycle. But there's also an extended version of this scene with some deleted footage in one of the trailers, where Bev seems to hint at how they will die. I've seen all of us die. It consumes us from the inside. 
everything so we don't have a choice anymore. It sounds like she was suggesting that if the losers didn't deal with it now, they might end up like Stan, consumed with fear from the inside and eventually driven to suicide or some other horrible death. After the release of Chapter 1, producer Barbara Muschietti said they planned for the opening scene of the second part to feature the Black Spot, which in King's novel was a club mainly frequented by black customers. In the original script for Chapter 1, there was a flashback to the attack on the Black Spot Club. However, that was cut from the first movie and instead there was just a brief mention when the young losers were checking over Ben's research into the history of Derry, where they told us that the Black Spot was a nightclub that was burned down by a racist cult. It would have been interesting in Chapter 2 to see if the Black Spot fire was connected in any way with the fire that killed Mike's parents. In the end though, the filmmakers decided to open the sequel with the brutal Adrian Mellon scene, which follows King's book and also fits well with the movie's new LGBTQ storyline. If you'd like to see many of these deleted and extended scenes, then the great news is that Andy Muschietti is working on what he calls a super cut of both IT chapters 1 and 2, which he estimates could be around six and a half hours long. As well as adding back in many of the deleted scenes from both movies, Muschietti is planning to film two additional scenes, one of which is from King's novel while the other is entirely new. In fact, one of those new scenes will be related to a resolution of the perpetrators of Adrian Mellon's beating, bringing some justice for that crime. Muschietti reckons that in the age of binging content, fans will love a six hour plus movie to watch either in one go or split up into smaller pieces. In fact, another possibility is that the entire story gets recut into a mini TV series that includes the original and unused footage in a similar way to how Tarantino did with an extended version of the Hateful Eight movie on Netflix. By the way, if you'd like to see more cool Chapter 2 bonus scenes, concept art and fascinating behind the scenes details, check out the World of It book, links in the video description below. Now, which of these deleted scenes would you like to see in a supercut of It? And would you like a third movie about Pennywise's history in Derry? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and hit the Gleam link below for a chance to win an awesome Pennywise Funko Pop. The giveaway runs until the end of this month and the winner will be contacted via email. Tap left to check out another It video or go right for something else you're sure to like. If you enjoyed this, then unleash your inner movie lover with more videos like this every week. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers.